Okay, it's Movember, day 16. Um, I feel a bit flat today. Uh, went to a funeral of a person in recovery, but more importantly, someone in the field of, uh, of um, the healing professions that uh, had affected a lot of people. Now I remember starting my recovery journey with her. It was um, Deb Sedovic. And um, there was a lot of family and friends and clients and colleagues there today. Um, so I suppose I wanted to do something on grief. Um, grief uh, and grieving is something that can be really difficult for people that don't do feelings well. If you never grew up in a family and watched uh, loss dealt with um, in all its complexity and stages where it wasn't honored. Um, sometimes kids are even just shielded from funerals because they're too difficult. Um, no one knows how to sort of talk them through their big feelings or they're not shielded from it and they're just expected to deal with it. One of the things I like about Pia Melody, she talks about um, intellectual abuse being where, um, you know, one of its aspects is where children aren't taught to problem solve. They're just expected to know things and and I think one of the dangers of childhood trauma is when you're just expected to know how to grieve. So I'm going to just present a couple of things today on grieving and finish with a poem. And, and the first thing um, you know, I'd like is just a disclaimer. The things I'm presenting in any of these videos are just some of the tools that are out there. If it's not a good fit for you, please see a professional um, or a minister or someone that can help you um, in the way that you might best feel helped. These are just tools and things that are out there. The, the first thing I wanted to just put up is the, it's, it's, it's the most talked about um, grief cycle. And so um, I'm gonna mention it because it's useful. Now this Kubler-Ross um, uh, stages of grief is probably the most used tool you'll get. There's a lot of people trained in, in how to help people um, go through these stages. Now these stages aren't linear. They can um, they can recycle and you can loop back. But generally, um, you know what's what they talk about is is that um, we'll start off initially with with denial, um, and denial will be it's it's overwhelming. It's it's largely um, a mixture of that sort of threat perceived threat part of the brain. Um, we'll we'll go into avoidance confusion. Um, elation and elation not necessarily being we're so excited but we can be it, we can be really elevated a shock and fear and once once this sort of shock phase sort of uh, it can move very quickly or it, it can take some time you'll be quite stunned but then we can go into an anger an anger phase and the anger can be just that the refusal to accept it just the pure frustration sometimes you know Today, Deb, Deb's fight was a fight with cancer, the frustration of illness and, and the loss, uh, just general irritation and anxiety, just an ongoing constant gnawing. We can go into the stage of bargaining, so, you know, struggling to find meaning in what's just happened. And, you know, this morning I spent time with a young man who was battling the loss of a relationship and it ended very quickly, trying to work out you know, uh, you know, struggling with what, why didn't uh, I get more time or time to change? Why did it happen so fast when it seemed to be going okay? Um, you know, <clears throat> at this point we'll reach out to others, sometimes to get clarity, sometimes to get our point of view across, um, sometimes to avoid. But generally we need to tell our story to someone. And it's our grief story to tell. Everyone's loss is individual. It's, it's based on the personal relationship we had with whatever it is. And so <clears throat> you can't assume grief is going to go a certain way for somebody. So tell your story. And sometimes we've got to dig around a bit to find it. When we do that, we're more likely to sink into feelings, depression, being overwhelmed, feeling helpless, then getting hostile, you know, flighting, wanting to run, escape fantasies, just going to leave. Just you know, And some of those escape fantasies, if it's say, a relationship, I'll never love again, I'll never fall in love again, I'll never, um, you know, let anyone hurt me like this. And so we'll go into those escape fantasies. And, and for many of these stages, you can loop back to bargaining, loop back to anger, 
loop back to denial can be very confusing. You can come across someone that's been grieving, largely ask them how they're going. Oh, I'm doing pretty good today, you know, yet see them an hour later and they're not. But generally one of the themes is, is if you can go through these stages, even in a whole variety of patterns, we'll get to a, plan, a, a point of acceptance, exploring options, new uh, plan in place and moving on. And if we allow ourselves to grieve and have the feelings that we need to have, to tell our story, to have some time where we're, you know, a bit disheveled and not really on song, um, we can we can get to a point of, of that radical acceptance. And it doesn't mean we don't feel sad when we think of the person, but we can accept the situation. Now, a plan I really like is a, and I'll put these these images up, but Thomas Headland is a man I follow online. I remember seeing Thomas present in Australia, South Pacific, brought him out years ago. A beautiful, passionate man in recovery. And he uh, presented this uh, this model, and I like it a lot. It's very similar. It has some similarities, but some of its words are, are significantly different, and I think it's more complex. One of the things P. and Melody says about developmental trauma, it's a grief issue. We grieve what we got, and we grieve what we didn't get. So I'll just try and um, you know, put this a little closer. It's from the home hospice of Sir, Sir um, and I can never get that word right there, Sonoma County uh, in California, Santa Rosa, California. Um, and so he talks very much about, we still have that loss and the shock of the loss, the denial, the, you know, the void. Um, it, we, we get, you know, it, things can get really numb and dull. And then that anger phase they call protest, you know, searching, resentment, helplessness, the anxieties there, similar to Kubler-Ross's, but we'll protest this, uh, you know, that Lieutenant Dan out of Forrest Gump yelling at the, the, the moon. You know, the protest can sink into disorganization, and that can be a very deep, deep process internally and externally. Lots of, uh, lots of despair and loss, numbness, a real lack of presence that we have in our life. So like you're walking through a bit like a ghost, you know, we really need to be able to tell our story at this point and be supported by others and have the expectation that we'll, we'll be looked after. And, you know, this is the phase where, you know, when we've lost someone or you're going through a hard time, people bring meals and put them in the fridge and things like that because we're just not up to cooking for ourselves. The stage, if we can go through these stages and again, looping back, we'll get to that, you know, reorganization, that, that, that time where life takes on new meaning and we can find a way to make peace with what happened. So I'll put both these things just as tools for grief. And and if you're out there and you're grieving, please reach out. Please excuse me for blowing the old hooter tonight. But I want to finish with one poem and then I need to get back to the coal face. This was made famous in four weddings and a funeral, but it was a famous poem before then. W. H. Arden, stop all the clocks, cut off the telephone. This is for Deborah Sedevic. Stop all the clocks, cut off the telephone, present, prevent the dog from barking with a juicy bone. Silence the pianos and with muffled drum, bring out the coffin, let the mourners come. Let aeroplanes circle moaning overhead, scribbling on the sky the message, she is dead. Put the crepe bows around the white necks of the public doves and let the traffic policemen wear black cotton gloves. He was my north, my south, my east, my west, my working week and my Sunday's rest, my noon, my midnight, my talk, my song. I thought that love would last forever. I was wrong. The stars are not wanted now. Put out every one. Pack up the moon and dismantle the sun. Pour away the ocean and sweep up the wood. For nothing now can ever come to any good. If you're out there and you're grieving something, please reach out. We're not meant to suffer alone as human beings. It can be painful to reach out, the fear that we won't be held. If you've got developmental trauma and you're still grieving, be gentle with yourself, but reach out and get support. This is for Movember. Um, please check out my Movember page. Men especially don't grieve well. We're socialized not to feel. So if you're out there, men, and you're grieving something, please reach out for some grief counseling and get some support. And be careful and be gentle with your heart today. Bye-bye.